welcome to Wine Library TV. I am your host, Gary Vay, Nur Chuck, and this, my friends, is The Thunder Show, AKA the internet's most passionate wine program. And as you can see, we have a crazy scenario. The show's gonna be a little bit prettier than normal, so I know a lot of you guys are happy about that. And we've got three fantastic wines. But before I start, we were on a little bit of an adventure. <laughs> we were supposed to be in a couple different places, but we ended up somewhere where I'm really happy about. Perspolis, which is really close to my apartment, so I'm gonna be eating here more often. And they also opened a new place, Shalazar, which is on 3rd Avenue between 80th and 81st, which also got a one-star Michelin. I know you guys know all about that, so I wanna give big ups to them. Kaz and crew have been really kind to welcome us into the restaurant and give us a place, because we were super close to doing the whole park and wine thing. <laughs> so why don't you tell the Vayner Nation who you are and how we ended up here. Um, I'm Helen Bueller. My family owns Bueller Vineyards, and we brought some wines out from California for Gary to taste. Uh, Bueller Cab, uh, HDV, Chardonnay, and a Reynoso Sauvignon Blanc. And how did you pick the, we know why you picked the Bueller. <laughs> Nepotism. How did you pick the other two? Um, HDV, wine that I chose because my um, it's friends of the family have the winery and I think the wines are amazing. Um, great. I'm a huge white wine fan and I love their shard. And then the other one is another friend and they just make really great, great salt blanc as well. It's my go-to wine, absolutely. And I love this group cup too. So. And why don't you tell us a little bit about your personal wine journey? Obviously you grew up in the business. Yeah, I was born and raised in the Napa Valley on the winery and I um, left and I'm just recently back and hoping to get my own wine started eventually. I am selling wine now, but hopefully we'll be making it fairly soon. In the process of wine, did you think it, like, obviously you didn't know any different growing up, but were you attracted to it? Did you think it was cool or were you kind of one of the kids that was like, I'm going to leave this place, I'm not going to do anything with wine? I think a lot of people felt that way, but you always know you're going to come back. It's such a small valley and it's so, you're just so comfortable there. And, I definitely didn't appreciate it as much when I was younger because I didn't understand. And then once I started to travel and see the world and talk to people, and like, you're from the Napa Valley, like we didn't know people lived there. And like, yeah, <laughs> yeah like, we do. And so that definitely gave me, you know, traveling definitely gave me the perspective. A bit of yeah, and you did. Even in our walk here, you, you mentioned Toronto and Paris. You've been able to see a lot of places. Mm -hmm. I do a lot of traveling. It's my favorite thing to do. So give me, uh, you also gave a big shout out to Chicago. Love Chicago. I and love it. And then I was like, I don't like Chicago so much. Sure, so <laughs> Tim F, don't cry. Um, and uh, give me, give me a top two cities outside of Chicago. Um, I love Berlin. Okay. And I love uh, top two cities. I can't say Chicago. No. Okay. Tor that's in Toronto. In Toronto. Okay. Toronto. And what about your down two cities? It's okay. Nobody's gonna get mad. Um, I, San Fran. San Francisco. I don't really like San Francisco very much. <laughs> and I'm not a really big fan of Paris, to be honest. Is that right? Yeah, I said it. I you did. Like you it. dropped the gauntlet. I did it. <laughs> and I had a really, it's all coming out. <laughs> I had a really interesting conversation about Paris recently. Like, really, really fascinating. We'll get into that off here. I don't want to diss Paris. Uh, I'm going to be in Paris, actually, in a couple of days. Anyway, let's get into the first one. Renoso 08 Alexander Valley Sauvignon Blanc. What is the suggested retail of this one? No. You're not sure? I'm not sure. Okay. So so obviously you've never bought it. You've just been no, given, yeah. it, given it <laughs> as you go through wine. I don't think I know the best on any of these wines, actually. Okay, no problem. I think we'll, we'll, we'll wing it. Um, you know, it's probably, you know, a lot of you know my thoughts on uh, Sauvignon Blanc. Is it possible to turn it down a little bit? I'm a little worried about the maniacs here. Some, some hardcore tunes <laughs> ripping. Um, you know, a lot of people know my thoughts on Sauvignon Blanc from California. I'm not pretty kind to it. I kind of diss it often saying it's a varietal that shouldn't even be once said that every single winemaker in California should rip up the vineyards and and go in a different direction because I'm a huge Sauvignon Blanc fan. I'm a big drinker of Sancerre. I love Sancerre. I, I drink a lot of New I, I like. I don't love where New Zealand's gone with their Sauvignon Blanc. It's gotten too insane. But um, even Chile, the Casablanca region. Um, so tell me what you like about this under normal circumstances. This is your go-to one. It's just really approachable and it goes with everything I'm kind of like, you know, a healthy California eater, lots of salads, lots of, you know, chicken and stuff, so it's just really, Flexible, it's nice, right there. yeah, and it's hot out, it's just super refreshing and crisp and, you know. Sure. All right, let's give it a snippy snip. 
Um, the first thing I pick up on the nose is a really kind of tropical component, which I like quite a bit. There's a little bit of pineapple coming through. There's an intriguing kind of little hint of almost like sugar cane on the nose. Are you picking up anything else? Before the show, she's like, I don't really know if I have to like, describe Do I need to like, give like, a tasting <laughs> note? I just think it tastes like, really no. good. <laughs> so, so are you picking up anything else? Okay. Um, so, you know, very, very clean and fruity on the nose, which I like quite a bit. The nose is definitely not goopy or overdone. You can give it a whirl. So it, it's fresh. It's got solid acidity, a little low for me. Um, I do like this thick component that I'm getting on the mid palate, which I think is quite intriguing. It finishes okay-ish. It's a hair light for me and lacks a little bit of complexity, but I'm not completely appalled by it. Clearly it's not over oaked, which is <laughs> thrilling. And and more than that, it, it comes across kind of relevant, meaning it's tasting like the style that I think a lot of palettes are starting to move towards. Um, it, it's, it's fresh, for sure. Uh, and really, if it had a little bit more going on, I could see myself really wrapping my head around it. The way it is now, you know, solid. I would probably score it in 88 point Sauvignon Blanc, which is far better than the majority of Sauvignon Blancs I score. And without knowing the price point, if it's staying in the 13, 14, 12, $11 price range, I think it's a pretty solid bottle of wine. Not too bad. Yeah, not too bad. I mean, do you, do you, are you a big Sancerre drinker? I love Sancerre. And when you were in Paris, were you drinking Sancerre for breakfast, lunch, did like just constantly drinking it? A lot of it, yeah. Yeah. It's really good. All right, let's, uh, let's move on to the next wine. Let's go over here. So we've got to finish this glass because we only have, yeah, cheers. You don't see that often on my wine. All right, so. Let's move into this. Now this comes from an iconic uh, project. The HDB has been one of the more sought after wines that we've had in the last five years and their Chardonnay has clearly become one of those five to ten Chardonnays from California with the Kisslers, with the Ramies uh, that we get massive demand for. There's probably only three to four California Chardonnay producers that we actually take incoming emails from at this point, people just, there's so much wine that nobody's really infatuated or in love with any specific wine. But this one continues to have huge, huge uh, anticipation for its release. This is the 07 High Vineyard HDB Chardonnay. This one usually comes in in the $50, $55 price range. So I'll get that a little bit suggested there. Um, so have you had this wine before? I have. Okay, it's, I love it. My problem usually with Chardonnays is they're too oaky and they're too buttery, and I don't find that here. So that's what I like about it. What other Chardonnay producers do you tend to like? Um, Bueller makes a really good Chardonnay. <laughs> <laughs> that was a little hometown. <laughs> so while we have you here, um, actually, uh, I'll mix it up a little. While we have you here, don't worry, don't get scared. Um, <laughs> what I'm really curious about is, you know, your position, your generation. Mm -hmm. Right? Napa, you know, I gave a talk in Napa a couple years ago where I was kind of not, somewhat critical saying, you know, you got to wake up and see that, you know, the brand isn't as big as you think and you've got to care about your customers and you've got to kind of check out the new technologies and understand what Facebook and Twitter was. And this is a couple years ago and obviously those things have become more mainstream. Give us the current events, you know, the, the state of the union of what you think, you know, your peers are, are looking at. What, what's kind of the vibe on the under 30 Napa peeps? Um, I, think that, I think that everyone's realizing that we have an amazing opportunity to, you know, make something and to help our parents out. There's a lot of corporations. There's a lot of new startup wineries. There are very few or, you know, less and less wineries that are family-owned and family-run, and so... You know, like me, like I left and realized how, how good I had it and how cool it was. And so it's important for us all to get pumped and to be a part of it. And, you know, start your own label, help your families out and, you know, maintain the integrity of your brand. And definitely, 
it's important for us as younger people who understand Facebook and Twitter, I'm sure my parents have no idea how to use those. You know, it's important for us to bring those tools and that technology and those skills back into the business and use that to maximize, you know, sales, of course, and to maintain um, customer relationships. Do you feel that there's a lot of younger generation uh, wine heirs that are coming back home and getting involved in, because of the tougher environment, or just because they're hitting that age where they're starting to decide what they're going to do and so they're attracted like to that? For my parents, <laughs> <laughs> I, think, I think it's a little bit of both. I think it's a little bit of both. But I mean, I definitely think that if you're born and raised there, you've, you've got the passion. You know, you can't not. It's, it's in the DNA. It's in, it's in you. Yeah. <laughs> Makes sense. Absolutely. And so. Well, how about a shout out to one or two really young people that you think are, are shining or have come back and really steered uh, in the right direction? Or, or if you know, you're know you betting on, if you had to invest in one or two people that kind of you've um, been impressed by their focus or their drive? Um, let me think. Well, both of the, I'm very close with both Peter and Chris Hyde mm -hmm. of Hyde Vineyards. And I mean, they are just, they work really, really hard and they're really into it and they've got the HDB project. Pete's working on one called Goodfellows. They're doing a crush pad in yep. San Francisco, which is going to be amazing. Um, they're just really into it. They live it and breathe it. It's one of the most passionate families I've ever seen in the Valley. So Very cool. Awesome. Good job. That was an awesome addition, I think, to the show. So let's get into the uh, to the Chardonnay. What are you picking up on the nose? White wine's fine. <laughs> it smells like wine. <laughs> What I'm getting on this wine is, you know, a really interesting kind of mixture of new and old world. It really does feel almost 50-50, you know, new world, old world. There is some honey and sunshine on the nose, but at the same token, there's a sense of minerality underneath on the nose, on the bouquet, which I think is interesting. There, there's, a, there's a hint of pear on the nose, and there's a little bit of a... Just a subtle, like, white flower component. I, I think it's quite interesting aromatically, actually. Let's give it a whirl. What do you think? It's delicious. <laughs> Is that it? Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, t to me, it's um, very fresh. It's got a, a medium to full-bodied kind of component. It's actually not as heavy as I anticipated. And... And I'm not sure what the direction is of the project, but I almost feel like, as in, in comparison to the last three or four vintages of this wine, this one's a little bit more neutralized. It's not as heavy. It's not as kisslered out as, as I remember in the past. This has a, a much more acidic citrus and mineral component to it, which really lends well to me because I tend to like wines from the Mekong. And, and, and so... I, I, I'm quite surprised by the elegance of this wine, and its, it's weight has completely thrown me off. Uh, it's, it's substantially lighter than I expected, but that is not to be confused as this is a light wine. This is heavy, good old-fashioned Chardonnay. There's a buttery, oaky component to it, but the balance is exceptional, and I actually really like this. Yeah, it's balanced, you know? And, and I think that's what a lot of projects, Chardonnay-wise from California, lack. Um, Yeah, I would score this wine 91 plus points. I think it's fantastic. I do feel that it's pressing the price point structure. I think I'd be happier at 37, 35 bucks than 50. Um, but but when you start comparing this style to what we're seeing out of white burgundy, there's a lot of white burgundy that taste like this at 70, 80, 90 dollars. So um, I think it's it's really well made. I think 91 plus points, and I think it's good to cover. Okay, now finally, the one that really is scary. There's a whole lot, there's a whole lot, I mean, this is your family's name. This is a ballsy move. It is. Um, this is the Bueller 07 uh, Napa Cab. You don't know the suggested retail of this? I don't pay for wine. <laughs> <laughs> I think this is probably in the 30s. It has been, you know, one of the more value-driven Cabernet producers for a while. A lot of people um, jumped on it in the last couple of minutes just because the press has been really good on it. And the wine has been massively fair, price-wise. You said to me, we were yapping a little bit too much, which just saves some stuff on the camera. But like, Dad's pretty fair about it. 
Yeah, Give me the philosophy of that because clearly this has been viewed by the outside world as one of the value plays in the valley. Yeah, people love us and we make amazing wines. It's cow country up there. It's, it's you know, and my dad is just a really down to earth guy. And he's, you know, he doesn't, you know, not to say that there aren't wines that are worth a lot of money, but it's, it doesn't cost so much to make wine that you need to charge. Right, you're, char you're, not you're, you're, you're charging for the brand mm -hmm. more so than what the actual cost of entry is. Absolutely. Was. And my dad knew, I mean, they started in, in 78, and he knew that times like this would come when they, the economy is not doing very well and people aren't spending as much on really expensive wines. And, you know, since we've positioned ourselves here, we're not, you know, we're not damaging our brand. We are who we've always been at the same price. You know, when some people, are, you know, have to discount, and that's kind of, you know, can be scary. And we're just, you know, coasting through just, just like we've always done. And, uh, you know, and I think what she's referring to, and she's being re really respectful, is there's a lot of brands out there that have been seventy, eighty dollar priced wines that are now in the market for forty and thirty, because yeah. or a hundred dollar wines that are sixty, or two hundred dollar wines that are eighty, because you know, hence CinderellaWine.com. Ma, link that up. Um, yeah, I mean, you know, that's how you sustain a brand over time. You know. Not too many highs, not too many lows. Yeah, exactly. Okay, let's give it a snippy sniff. Let's see what's going on here. A terrible nose. <laughs> so, what are you picking up on the nose? Current. Yeah, current. there's definitely black current coming through. There's a little hint of cedar that I like quite a bit, and also a vanilla component, almost like vanilla ice cream action on the on the nose, but definitely dark fruit is coming through. Cassis, black cherry, raspberry, dark blueberries. It's it's awfully fruity on the nose. Let's give it a whirl. Suspense is killing me. <laughs> you know and some of you have been on the wine library email newsletter service longer than Wine Library TV's been around, and you'll know that I've consistently um, supported this producer for a while now, and we did some big things with the 05 Vintage in this wine. Um, 2007, I've got to be honest, I don't think we have to be as cool as the people at Hyde or your dad. It's such a great vintage that I think myself and Kaz, I think we could have made a good wine in 2007. <laughs> the vintage is so exciting. This is a really solid effort. I'm really curious, if this is still under the $40 price range, it's going to be an exceptional, um, an exceptionally uh, exciting product. Uh, the wine's extremely smooth, it's got good fruit, um, it's well made, it's, uh, it's got a really nice silky balance. I, I think it's a good wine. I mean, here's what I hate. I hate shows like this. I don't know if you know this, it's actually worse than you're on the show. Because if the wine was on the show by itself, people would be like, but now they're going to be like, oh, because she's there, you don't hurt her feelings, you're being He's nice. He's been mean to me all day. So I really not have. So, so I, I think it's really well made. I mean, you know, I, I think that, you know, ironically, even though I scored the HDV very well, I was a hair disappointed by it, even though it's my style, um, because I've liked it more in the past. On the other hand, this is a really, really good effort. Um, and and a really solid bottle of cap. Uh, you know, to, to me this is like a, a 90 plus point cap. Yeah, yeah I, I like it. You <laughs> probably scored 100, right? I mean, 100 plus. 100 plus. Um, no, but it's really good. I, I think what we need to do, obviously, off this show is do a very serious sit down, 2007 blind, double blind cab off. We'll throw the Bueller back in and we'll see if I have egg on my face after I say, oh, I hate this and it's awkward. And, I give it a 65, but I'm willing to go there because it's, it's really it's really well structured and really well made and I like it. Um, and again, if it's hovering under 40, I think it's quite a value in this current insane pricing structure of the Valley. Final thoughts on that Valley. What do you want people out there to know about it from the perspective that you have? Um, I don't know, just support family wineries or you, this has been a big theme for this has been a big theme for you. Like, do you feel like there's too many people that are coming from other, you know, they made money in other places that are coming? Not, yeah, not, that you, a, not, not that you want to keep them, right? Yeah, no, but, no, no, no. There's, but, a, but, there's but, definitely a lot of that. I mean, I think there's something like 300 to something wineries in the valley now. So 
so it's just it blew up, you know, and um, and it's great, and there's great wines being made, um, and yeah, I wish them well, because it's really hard right now if you're not an established winery to to do well, you know, so I wish them well, and I think it's great, I think everyone should, you know, get into wine, it's a wonderful thing. Agreed. So, the tradition is the guest gets to ask the question of the day, fire away. Okay, well, I already asked you earlier, but it's a question about the Jets. I'm wondering how the Jets fans are feeling about Rex Ryan bringing in the coach for the Yankees to teach their quarterback how to slide. It's a good question. <laughs> Clearly, he didn't learn that much since he got hurt last night going head first again. Mark, you're the Sanchez. Please take care of yourself. <laughs> Thank you so much for being on the show. Thank you. You, with a little bit of me, we're changing the wine world whether they like it or not.